Okay, we are going to build a universal remote, but let's, let me give you a quick preview of what it can do. Upon scanning the phone to the NFC tag, it turns on my workstation, which is a uh, 4K monitor TV kind of thing. It turns on via the D1 Mini that's connected to the uh, transmitter. Upon scanning the NFC tag again, it will turn off the TV as well as lock up my workstation. For this project, all you need is a micro USB cable. This will power up the D1 Mini as well as enabling you to initially flash the firmware onto the D1 Mini. You will need an NFC tag that you saw earlier that's posted onto the wall to scan it and then act accordingly. This is really optional. This little receiver will collect information from the Samsung remote and with that information, we're going to transmit it out via this IR transmitter. Let's start with the IR receiver. Connect data to D4, VCC to 3.3, ground to ground on the D1. Once you're done with the hardware connection, let's go into Home Assistant on the left-hand side Go to ESP Home, click on New Device, continue, name it whatever you want, pick whatever you want, click on Skip. Click on edit. Feel free to use all my codes right here. So delete whatever was there and paste everything here as you can see. Password can be anything that you want. It really doesn't matter as long as you remember it, of course. SSID will be your Wi-Fi SSID in your house. You'll want to give it a static IP. So this is my static IP. Make sure that yours is correct for your network. The gateway, the same thing for your house. The top section is basically standard. The name of this will be whatever TV that you're using. I'm using a Samsung TV because I want to make it as small as possible. We're only going to connect the receiver at this time. And for that part, we're using the pin D4 as mentioned before. Click on save and then install. Click on manual download. Legacy format. It's going to take a while to compile and then give you a bin. Download the bin file so that you can flash it onto the D1 Mini. I'm going to hit stop because I did it already. Now it's a good time to connect the micro USB cable to your D1 Mini and to your computer. For serial port, you can click on auto select. Node MCU firmware is going to be the bin file that the ESP Home gives you earlier after finish compiling. Bot rate will be 115 200. Flash mode, you'll want quad IO. Erase flash, yes, wipe all. And then click on flash node MCU. Once it's done flashing on the D1 Mini, click on the reset button. And then you'll see that it will be online. Click on logs so that you can see all of the logs. Now on the Samsung remote, click on power. But right now, I'm just only interested in the power button. So on my Samsung remote, I'm clicking power to see all of the data that's coming from the remote to my receiver. Here you can see that it's coming in and this is the line that we need. Copy it to notepad, copy it to somewhere else because we'll use it later. We're now done with the receiver part. Let's power down and connect the IR transmitter. The IR transmitter is basically almost the same thing. Take out the three wires from the IR receiver and put it into the IR transmitter. For whatever reason, we cannot use D4 for transmitter. So we're going to use D5 for the transmitter. Let's go back into ESP Home. Click on Edit. The top part is basically the same thing. We're just going to put in the bottom part for the transmitter now because we no longer need the receiver. Be sure that you're using pin D5 and the remote transmitter is for a Samsung remote. So it's a transmit underscore Samsung. 
This is for the power button. So the data is going to be the data that we got from the receiver earlier. N bits is 32. Click on install. This time you can flash it wirelessly. So go ahead and click on wirelessly and it will flash wirelessly to the D1 Mini. Very cool. Once it's done flashing, you can go to configuration, integrations, You'll find your Samsung TV that you configure with ESP Home. Click on Configure. Click on Submit. Remember the password? Enter the password right now. You can put in whatever area that you want. If you click on the device again, it will give you that one single button for power. And that's it. You made a very powerful smart remote for about five dollars you've done the hardest part now if you want to take it to the next level as you've seen in my intro let's do it open home assistant on your phone go to the menu which is the um, left side go down to configuration scroll down a little bit click on tags add a tag Name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it my Samsung TV. Click on Create and Write. Put the NFC tag next to your phone so that it writes. The tag has been successfully scanned and written. Now you can create an automation for it. It's easier to create the automation on the desktop. So let's jump back onto your desktop again. Go down to Configuration. Go to automation. I've already created mine, but let's see what it looks like in the automation. In the name, you can find it whatever you want. Description is the description, anything that you want as well. You can see that trigger type is the tag and then select from the list of tags that you've already scanned. I'm using the Samsung tag that you saw earlier. The condition is optional for me. The condition is that when the TV is on. So when the TV is on and I scan the tag, what will it do? Down in the action part, you can see that I'm using the service switch turn on. Turn on which switch? Turn on the Samsung TV office that we created with our IR sensor. And then there's another switch, which is locking up my desktop. So it's the equivalent of window L on the keyboard. That way, if somebody turn on the TV manually via a Samsung remote or whatever, they will see a lock screen that they have to log in. They can't just start using their desktop without entering a login. Here's another automation that I created with the same NFC tag. This one is for turning the TV on. The trigger would be the, exactly the same thing. It's the tag being scanned. What is the condition? The condition is that if the TV is already off. When the TV is off and I scan the tag, what we will do here, you can see in the actions that the switch IR will be turning on just as similar as before. And the volume of my window will be going down. That way it's the same thing as hitting my keyboard and the pin or the password is opened up already for me to just type in. Hopefully you found this tutorial easy and helpful. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel and thanks for watching.